Hey, it's Pastor Haley from Amazing Grace Baptist Church, Wichita, Kansas. I wanted to make a quick video to help uh, people out there, especially pastors. I'm a pastor, and I understand uh, right now in kind of the situation that we're in with the coronavirus, the need for a live stream. And a live stream is something that we set up here at our church that I had uh, uh, set up a couple months ago, not realizing how much it would be needful right now. And so if you're a pastor out there or you're a lay worker and you want to help your pastor set up a live stream, I just want to walk you through the components that I have that we, that we use for our live stream. It works really well. If you go on our website, it's Amazing Grace Baptist Church. You can follow the link to our YouTube page. And that really helps uh, you to kind of see what the live stream is for us, the quality. It really does do a great job. Uh, very simple. We're not a big church by any means, uh, but we did get this, and it's fairly, effect fairly effective for what we do, and it's fairly cost-effective. So let me just walk through a couple components. But first of all, you've got to have a, what, a platform to live stream. So we use YouTube. Uh, YouTube is free. And then you've got to go on to your YouTube page after you get yourself set up and you have to pretty much request to live stream and you send, and you click a couple buttons that are through there and kind of fill out their thing, their form that they have. And then after like 24 hours, they will get back to you and say, you're ready to live stream. Okay, So you got to set up YouTube first or if you do whatever platform that you use, the church, I just do YouTube. I don't have any other kind of social media that I do. Uh, I just do YouTube itself and that works very effective for us amen so you got to have that first go to youtube make sure your youtube is set up for live streaming otherwise you can't live stream next things you need is a couple components that i'm going to walk you through first so first of all uh, you need a camera so we have a camera right here that's really that's really good for us you can get a camera that does 1080 hp if you want but 1080 is really not good to stream through youtube because of i mean it takes so much to transfer all the uh, the data to YouTube, 720 is just fine, and and most uh, most videos that you see are pretty much 720 on YouTube anyway, because not many people have a 1080 capability to view anyway. So as long as you can get a camera that videos in 720p, you should just you should be just fine. If you're looking for a place to start what start with, this is a Canon Vixia HFR80. It's a fairly uh, cheap camera. This was probably two or three hundred dollars. I don't. I don't remember quite what I paid for it. I went to Best Buy and I got it. Uh, it it works really well for what we have. Uh, the other thing that's important about your camera is the HDMI port. So this is a mini HDMI. If you're familiar with tech, technology at all, uh, HDMI is what you use to stream. You know, it's what sends the information to whatever device that you're using. So some cameras have a uh, full HDMI. This is a mini. So you want to look at that when you're getting a camera. Uh, if I could kind of go back and redo it, I would probably get something that doesn't use a mini HDMI. But this works really well for what we use. Just know you might have to order the HDMI cable because not many places sell a mini HDMI. Okay, but so you need a camera. This works really well for us. It's got a zoom option and all of those things there. And uh, it's again, it's a Canon Vixia HF R80. Uh, that works really well for us. But again, as long as you have something that records in 780 and has an HDMI output, that's really what you're looking for, okay? Let me show you the next component. So this is what is called an encoder. Now, ignore all the rest of these gadgets here. This is really what you want to focus on right here. This is an encoder. This is called the Webcaster X2 by Epifan Video. Uh, now, you can go and find Epifan online. Epifan no longer uh, manufactures this specific product, but you can buy these online still. And let me tell you, they're cheap. They're like 200 bucks, I think, uh, you know, maybe a little over. Maybe they're cheaper now since they no longer make them. But this encoder does a couple of things for you because what you have to have is you got to have a camera, obviously, that takes your video, and then the video has to be sent somewhere. So normally, a lot of people will send it to a computer, and they will, you know, take the video, record it on your computer, like what we have here. That's what we used to do. We would put it on the computer. Then we go through and we edit the video. And then you have to, you know, do all of that. And then you upload it to YouTube from the computer. The encoder cuts out a computer. So if you don't want to spend money on a computer, you can buy the encoder. And you do not have to have a computer because what the encoder does, when you live stream, I just simply push the power button on the left side here, and I'll show that to you. So here's the encoder. This is what it looks like. I simply push the power button right here, 
and it tells me here that I'm paired to my YouTube channel, Amazing Grace Baptist Church, I hit the power button and it will tell me that I'm streaming. And once I start streaming, it goes to the encoder and the encoder will live stream straight from here to YouTube through my internet connection. So I have a hardline internet connection right here. The encoder also will hook up via Wi-Fi, but I have it wired straight in right here through a Cat6 cable. You can, you can either do it that way or you can do Wi-Fi, but it will stream straight from the encoder right to YouTube. And when it is done, it doesn't have to store the memory on here because it sends it straight to YouTube. So that's why it skips the computer because normally you'd have to record it then you'd have to get it to the computer. You have to store it on here first, edit all the video. Then you got to take it and do it this way. And again, there's no capability really to live stream because you have to go through your computer to do it. Whereas this, you can live stream and it sends the video for you. All you have to do to start is hit the power button. And when you're ready to stop, hit the power button and you're done. And it goes straight to YouTube for you, okay? So those are really the two components that you need. Now, it's nice to have a monitor because the Epifan will hook up straight. In fact, I can show that to you. The Epifan hooks up straight to your monitor. Let me just let me just show you that so you can see. And for legal purposes, I'm not endorsed by Epifan to endorse, or I'm, I'm, I'm not being endorsed by Epifan to endorse their product, okay? So if I make, uh, but if Epifan wants to give me money, I'm a Baptist, I'll take it, amen? And, uh, oh, hold on, so let me show you what you can do here. Okay, so this is the Epifan right here. Let me show you. This is the settings. Okay, so this is this is Epifan. So I'm not using my, I have a, mini, a Mac Mini right here, uh, but I'm not using that at all. This is straight from Epifan. My Epifan video is hooked up to YouTube. I can even do it from here. I can just go straight to here and hit start. I can unpair to go to a different device. Here's my church web, uh, my church information here where it's sending it to YouTube. I have some settings that I can change. This is my camera. Right now I'm streaming with the 1080, but it it uh, will end up uh, it end up going uh, into something different, a different thing there. But you don't have to worry about that. But that's my HDMI in. Uh, but so this is the Epifan itself. So you can skip the computer. You can go straight to an Epifan. Now, a couple, couple components that you need for the Epifan here. So you've got to have an internet connection, whether it's Cat6 cable wired straight from your internet router, or you can just use Wi-Fi if you got Wi-Fi. Hardwiring it in, hard in, in, excuse me, is always better. Uh, you know, if you have a choice between Wi-Fi and hardwiring, you always want to hardwire it in. That's always better. But you can use Wi-Fi. It just is sometimes a little glitchy. Uh, depending on your Wi-Fi signal. Now, you really, if you're going to stream, you need good Wi-Fi. I forgot to mention that earlier. Wi-Fi is super important. You need a really good uh, internet connection is what I'm talking about. I apologize. You need a great internet connection where it streams a little faster. I used to have uh, AT&T's cheapest internet connection that I could get here at the church, and I could not stream. I It really was, it was just it just didn't work. It wouldn't send it fast enough, and I wouldn't be able to get the information to and from fast enough. So you really got to get a good internet connection. I just went one step up in my AT&T internet connection, and it streams great, and I have not had any problems with it. So you got to up your internet speed for your upload speed, not the download speed. Your download speed could be 100, you know, whatever, down, 100 gigabytes of download, but your upload speed could be like 5 gigabytes. So you've got you've to upgrade your upload speed because this is uploading your video to YouTube. And so, but you need, you need a hardwired connection in. This is a USB device where you can hook up a mouse and you have the two USB connections there. Here's my HDMI, HDMI out that is sending the video that I'm seeing here so I can see what I'm videoing. So you need, so it has an HDMI out that you can put onto a, a monitor so you can see what you're videoing and what it looks like. And you got to have an HDMI in because this is what comes from your camera to your uh, Epifan. So right now I have this hooked up through a, a, an HDMI splitter because I do other monitors here at the church. That's no big deal. You don't have to have that. You can go straight from your camera to your Epifan if you wanted to and just basically hook it straight up from there straight from here to your computer and you're good to go and it's not 
anything past that. This will do all the rest of that for you. If you want to monitor your YouTube live stream, you can get you a computer that will connect to the internet. So you can connect to YouTube and you can see the live stream and you can see, you know, uh, how many people are watching and all of that stuff. But if you don't have the capability or the resources to do that, just invest in a camera and an Epifan and then get you a monitor to be able to see what you're viewing. But you don't even have to have the monitor if you don't want to. You can look at what you're viewing uh, on the camera. But I would suggest getting a monitor so you can make sure that this is sending the video so you know what the Epifan is looking at, just in case that there's any problems that you might have, okay? Uh, last thing that you make sure that you need is your camera might come with a HDM, uh, it might come with audio already, uh, and it might not. So we hook up our camera audio to our sound system. So if you, uh, if, if you understand how to do that, the way that this hooks up is through the sound system on here. This is completely different. You don't have to have anything like this. What you can do is if your camera has audio, like this camera has some audio in ports, if you have a sound system, you can hook up the audio jacks to the camera. So that way your, your sound system will send the audio to the camera and then the camera will send the audio through the HDMI to the Epifan if you wanna do it that way. Now, you don't have to because some cameras come with an audio already built into the camera. You just might get a lot of background noise because it'll pick up everything, not just you. So if you want it really just to get you and your microphone, you wanna to try to find a way in your sound system. If you have an audio jack, which is those red and white cables, which looks just like this. this these are black and red, but you wanna get some kind of an audio jack from your sound booth, uh, from your sound system that will hook straight into your camera. So your camera will only get the volume coming from your sound system. And what your sound system do, your sound system will send uh, the audio. There's a way to do that where it will hook up the audio to, uh, it will send the audio to the camera and one of your volume indicators will show that, okay? But if you don't have all that tech savviness, I had to learn that. I'm not tech savvy by any means. Uh, if you have questions, you can I can maybe hopefully answer, but I'm not great at it. What I did personally, and this is what I recommend for pastors or anybody that really needs help with this stuff, what I did personally is I called a sound company here in Wichita, and I just asked them to come and tell me what I need, and then I went and got it. I had them hook it up for me. It was fairly cheap to do it. I paid for their labor. I bought the equipment, or you can buy the equipment through them and pay for the labor. Either way, sometimes if you buy the equipment through the sound company, uh, it, you can get a better warranty and they'll come out for free to maintenance your items because you bought it through them. Uh, but that's what I did. I called a sound company. They came and helped me and hook it, hooked it all up for me and set it up so that way I could do that. But if you don't have those kind of resources or that kind of money, this is a great way to go where all you need to do is just buy a cheap 720 camera with a good HDMI uh, 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 import that and out port that you can use and then hook it straight up to your Epifan and then all you do is you go into the monitor here with your Epifan into the settings and, and you just hook it up to your YouTube. It has a couple things right as you open up the page. This is how you set up your Epifan with your YouTube. So I hope that helped you and I hope that was clear enough. I know that was a lot of stuff to go through. If you got any questions, you can comment or you can send it to me. My uh, phone number is 620-899-9959. You're welcome to call me or text me if I can help you anyway. And But again, best resource is just call a local sound company. They'll really be able to help you and know what you need and know what capabilities that you have to set it up. So hope that was a help to you. God bless.